In our first video, we looked at administrator rights. We now move on to rights that administrators have and supervisors have as well. And this is in our departments. Departments are where we go to create the rules that uh, employees work to. We can have as many sets of rules as we like. We'll just click on one of them here. And that's telling us that in this department called CTS Office, uh, we round our clockings to the nearest 15 minutes. And once we've worked five hours, it's going to automatically deduct a half hour lunch break. We can also have the employees clock for their lunch break and the system will take whichever is the greater. So if they take a 23 minute lunch break, it will take it up to half an hour. If they take a 40 minute lunch break, it's going to take it to 40 minutes. In a similar way, we can also have them clock for their uh, morning tea and afternoon tea breaks. The next tab is the overtimes, and so in here, once they've worked 40 hours in a week, they get overtime. If they work 8 hours in a day, they get overtime, and 11 hours, they go to double time. We also have a few others here, 7th day overtime, if they work on a Saturday or a Sunday, or if they work through their lunch. In terms of the schedule, uh, this is just saying that they're starting at 8 o'clock in the morning, finishing at 4.30 in the afternoon. But we're giving them 30 minutes of what we call start zone. So that means that any time between 7.30 and 8 o'clock will not even be considered anything other than an 8 o'clock start. If they finish anywhere from 4.30 and in this case until 5 o'clock, we're not going to worry about thinking of anything other than a 4.30 finish. Now we can change those, we can make those anything that we like, but that's how it's set up right now uh, so that you've got a half hour grace period before you start work that applies so if you get a good run with traffic you're not going to get paid overtime. We can also lock employees out at particular times so we can say that perhaps before six o'clock in the morning you are unable to clock out if you wanted them to do that. Uh, we also have our advanced rules and this is a catch-all for everything else so we're saying that midnight is the end of a day if your workplace works past midnight uh, we can allow for that, we can have whether the employees work through the day change, but then what does that apply to? Does that become the day that they've clocked on for the clocking or the day that they've clocked off? In the maximum shift here, that's just saying 14 hours. That's alluding to if they've clocked on at, say, 8 o'clock in the morning and by 10 o'clock that evening they have not clocked off, we can safely assume that they've forgotten and that that is a missing punch. Uh, in this case, we've got three new shifts starts that's saying that you can clock on clock off for your break clock back on for lunch and then clock again for an evening or an afternoon break and then go home uh, we also have some approval rules here so we're saying the time card needs supervisor approval in this case we don't need to have that if you don't want to and then if the supervisor does need to approve it what happens once it's been approved does who and who gets emails through that we go to, oh, I'm sorry, the shifts. And the shifts are another look at the screen that we saw earlier, uh, which is with the assignments and the alarms. Uh, the only difference here is that supervisors are having access to this, whereas the one in the settings tab, supervisors do not have access to that. If we look at the employees, and so if we go to one in here, we can see that this particular employee has a username and password for the software has a home department, is based in the Pacific time zone. Uh, we can add an email address and send them reports. In this case, this employee has view and edit rights to their time card. Uh, you don't obviously need to have uh, edit time reports, sorry, edit for time card for every employee. Uh, they have a payroll ID, which would then go to your payroll software. They're exempt from particular rules, or we can set their status to see whether they're exempt or not. Uh, they have a particular set of shifts that they're on. In this case, this employee is tracking their jobs and they're an active employee. If this person were to leave, you want to keep their information but uh, not have them in the software on a day-to-day -day basis, you can archive them off. They don't count towards your employee numbers, uh, but you do retain their information for reporting purposes. In terms of punch management, this employee has a PIN number for our PIN systems or our PIN terminals. They have a badge number. Our uh, card-based terminals and finger reader terminals both also offer PIN numbers. 
as well as badge numbers. Uh, this person has five fingerprints registered. You can have up to five fingerprints registered for our fingerprint terminals. There's also a face ID for our MN2000 terminals. Uh, in this case, they can transfer their uh, department. They can use the smartphone and they can use it globally. We can limit that to particular places where they can clock on from. Uh, they can clock on from any computer and they can call the 1888 number which lets you uh, log in through the phone system. In terms of holidays, these are the holidays that apply specifically to that employee. Uh, we also have messages that we can send to the employee through the terminals. And we have employee services. So if you want to turn this on, when the employee clocks onto the software, they can see their time card, they can, they can uh, clock on with website punch. They can't approve their own time card. They can display a benefit accrual. In this case, they don't have the ability to add expenses, but they can add tips. And you can turn any of these on to yes or no uh, at any time. Uh, in this case, we're going to not email the employee their time card, but you can do that if you'd like. Uh, and as I mentioned, the texting uh, doesn't work at the moment. This is where, if you want to give them access to this information, you would see their, or you would enter their vacation, sick leave, and any other accruals. This is where we do things like banked hours. So if your employees perhaps work three hours of overtime, and instead of paying them uh, three hours of overtime, you give them 4.5 hours of banked hours, that is where you would enter that in, and then they could take those banked hours at a later stage. These are the jobs that this employee can work, and we can add or take away any of the uh, particular jobs that are in the system. So in this case, this individual can only work four of the six jobs that we have on the floor at any one time. And then these are the shifts, which we saw earlier, uh, which apply to this particular individual. So that concludes the information on the departments and the users. And if you would like to continue on, we will finish with the time cards, the reports, and the status board.